he owns a copy of the the first appearance of Batman. I went in there and and he let me let me hold it. Uh, so what issue is that? Uh, the I'm, Detective I'm kidding. Comic. I'm messing with you. I, if, I didn't, if I didn't know what the first appearance of Batman was, they would literally come in here and take my license away. And you see, it'd be like a movie with moving guys coming in, boxing things up, like I just went bankrupt five minutes ago. <laughs> and you know what's sad? I went right along with it. I was like, oh, well, yeah. let me educate you about Batman. You obviously don't know enough you about saying, it. Batman or Bruce Wayne? Because I always get them confused. <laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. So glad to see you all once again. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by. I think that you might enjoy the content that we have here on the channel. And today we are doing something a little bit different than what I normally do on the channel, but it's all related. It's all in one universe. This is one of the cool things about doing a channel like this is meeting and connecting with fellow fans of Batman. So today I have a very special interview with a friend of mine, Brad, who I met through this channel, who was a fan of watching the channel. And you've probably seen him in the comments and probably seen him uh, interacting with me on the live streams. But I think you're going to be interested in what he has to offer and what he's going to be talking with us today. I certainly was, which is why I invited him to come onto the channel. So without any further ado, let's bring Brad onto the show. Brad, thank you so much for uh, joining me here on the channel. It's my pleasure. I've been wanting to uh, talk with you, you know, ju and just to give everybody just kind of context to how this came about, I was doing the asking for submissions for the um, uh, Batman Beyond Season 3 recaps, and Brad was kind enough to submit his, and I got the video, and I said, wow, it looks good. Thank you so much for doing that. And then I just made a little comment about uh, what an incredible collection that he was surrounded by. And, uh, and he goes, oh yeah, by the way, you know, this is a, this, this is all mine. This is my collection. So, and I don't want to steal his thunder. So I'll let him talk more about that. But I said, Hey, we got to talk about it. I've got, you know, my, uh, my meager wall here and, and you are, looks like you're sitting in a toy store. I mean, this is, it's incredible. Tell me what, what, uh, and tell everybody else what, what you told me. This collection is, is not to be taken lightly. What, what, uh. What What is the status that you hold with this collection? It is the Guinness Book World's Record collection for the largest Batman memorabilia. <laughs> That's just incredible. It was just so random when I, when when uh, when you told me that I was like, "What are the chances that uh, you and I would be uh, have the pleasure of talking to the Guinness Book World Record holder?" So, how long have you held the record? Uh, since two thousand and sixteen, I think. Oh wow. Um, wow. I, I I don't remember. I guess it's on the 2015. Oh, there it, you go. It was the there official it is, the official. <laughs> official year. To I'll hold it up so everyone can see. Oh, nice. That's so cool. Well, congratulations. That's incredible. Is there anybody and I don't even know if do you do you know this? Is there anybody in second place like that's that's closing in on your collection or you've blown everybody out of the water? I don't know who would be in second place. There was a, a a wonderful friend who was in second place, and unfortunately, he died last year. Oh, um, sorry to hear that. And uh, uh, outside of that, now, I don't know who would be in second place. Uh, I can't wait to see who's in first place. I can't wait to see who beats me. That I would love to see that. I would I would generally would, would really love it. I would love to see like like someone look at my collection, like, amateur. Yeah. Like, do you I even like that man? <laughs> do you have a number count uh, for your collection? I do. It's at something like 16,241, give or take. I can never remember See, wait, the Wait, wait, wait. Oh, slow down. 16,000? Is that what you said? 241. <laughs> that, that last one was important. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to dismiss that. That is incredible. And, and all of this is is Batman. Correct. Yes. It's, no. It's, it's also Joker and Clayface. Oh, okay. And Harvey but all, Dent. all Batman. It's Harvey not just Two Face. You know. So, okay. Yeah. So no, yeah, it's all Batman. It's all Batman related. All Batman, not other DC. Do you collect any other DC stuff, or is it all Batman? Why would you? Why would? You? <laughs> yeah, you, you've no. got a point. You've got a point. Uh, all right. So here's the question that you probably get asked all the time: What what started this all? Was this you know, I assume you were a fan of Batman before you started collecting, but was there a like one item that made you go, I got to keep doing this? Or did it just slowly happen over time? It was one item. It was, um, I was a fan of Batman, just like I'm a fan of 
He-Man and Transformers and all those other things. And I watched the 66 reruns and I watched yeah. the Super Friends. But um, one night my parents were watching the news uh -huh. and the news story came on about Robin dying. This was mm -hmm. in 88. All right. Yeah. yeah. And it caught my attention. And a couple months later, I was in a bookstore, left all alone because it was the 80s and no one cared about kids at that time. Yeah, you could do that. For you sure. could do that. You totally do that. Me and a bunch of other kids, we were lost boys going through magazines of ninjas because um, ninjas yeah. used to be a thing in the 80s, too. For oh, all for watching. sure. I remember that. Yep. And I'm looking through ninja magazines at the Walden Books in the mall. Um, and all of a sudden, I saw a trade paperback of Death in the Family. And I remembered it had a picture of Batman holding Robin's dead body on the cover. And I remembered about yeah. the story and I'd never read a comic book before. And I asked my mom to buy it. Yeah. And I read it and I had to see what happened next. What an incredible uh, story to start with. Like you really jumped in the deep end. It was confusing too, because I was like, from the show, it was like Robin's Dick Grayson. Who is Jason Todd? Yeah. Right. 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 But, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, and picking up and getting the next issue and seeing what happens and then finding out there's a comic book store I didn't know about and going to a comic book store the first time and starting to buy the back issues going, I read basically Batman's history backwards. I, I it, like a oh. tenant. I was like reading the issues before and then I would get the one before that and I was totally i would read the end of the story and then read the beginning of it and so so you you started with the comics yes like and then because yeah for me and i'm, I'm sure you've heard me tell the story on the on the channel was the cartoon i think that i had i had seen some of the 60s batman my my uncle had taped him off of you know don't tell anybody he taped him off of hbo or something and then gave me a, a vhs copy and i remember watching some of those but it was really it was the animated series that really cemented that. And then I went, oh, I want to know more about this character and started getting the comics. But for you, it was the other way around. You started with the comics. Yeah, I started with the comics and I was really reading the comics for about half a year. Then the movie came out in 89. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then it's like the thing that was like the hot thing was the thing I was already deep into. The thing that I could go like, oh, yeah, yeah, Batman. Sure. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. right. I know right. about that. You know, yeah, I, I could be a total hipster about the whole thing. <laughs> you were a like, hipster before it was a it was a thing to be hipster. Yeah, I was a Batman hipster, and and then yeah, and then when the animated series came along, um, that was really big to be able yeah. to see all those things in the comic books come to life in the manner of which they were very similar to the comics. Yeah, because yeah, when uh, movies, of course, you see Penguin and you see Joker and you see Penguin right. and Joker on the shows, but like a cartoon episode with Raz Al Ghul. Yeah, which I still pronounce Raz. I I read it as Raz. I pronounce it as Raz. He's always gonna be Raz to me now. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, <laughs> so you started with the the first item in your collection was Death in the Family, mm -hmm. and then wh where did it go from there? Were you attracted to the toys or to sculptures or? Not really. I had a few Batman action figures, but it was mostly comic books for a long time, okay. which is probably the smart thing. In the end, because going back to get those books now would be considerably much more. So, oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, I didn't really start getting other things till around early two thousands. Oh wow! That, that's okay. when I that's when I really started to. Anytime I was in a store, a Target or a Walmart, whatever toys they had, I would get the toys, and then it would start to be like a wall of toys. <laughs> yeah. Then there was two walls of toys, and then yeah, and then as I made more money and was more yeah. successful i would start collecting bigger things and more eclectic things and learning more about vintage stuff as i went along and yeah all that all that yeah. type of stuff and it just grew and grew and grew so you started bu buying up some some toys and and things like that just things that interest you i take mm -hmm. it. And, yeah everything you... i never really bought anything that i was like I was never, oh, it has a Batman symbol, so I have to buy it. No, I was sure. never, it really was always stuff that, like, I just legitimately wanted. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. And, and at the core of the collection is comic books. That's the heart. Yeah, yeah. And then as it expands out, out of that, like, action figures are the next thing 
Like I really have an affinity for action figures more sure. than statues and other things. And then, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then after that's like food products and the, oh yeah, the expendables and the things that aren't meant to last, the things right. that aren't meant to exist, the yeah, Coke yeah. bottles and candies, oh, sure. and, and then after that's like statues and yeah, clothing. Yeah, I was the same way. The action figures. I, I went through a period of time where it was like. I think they were that you could buy an action figure for, you know, six, eight bucks or something. The real nice ones were like ten dollars. And it was like every weekend we'd go to to, you know, Walmart or Kmart or whatever. And it was like working through the week to try to save up, you know, ten bucks to go buy an action figure and just walking down that aisle. And 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 I look back on it now. It's it's funny because like they, they had Batman you know, in every, you know, submarine Batman, uh, action fire Batman, you know, every type of Batman. But I just, I loved it. And I've just, I've got a tub sitting right here that I need to put out sometime, but just full of, you know, played with uh, Batman action figures. Tax uh, accountant Batman. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. And and you were talking about food products. I've got, yeah, back here in the corner when the uh, Batman Forever came out, I've got like all the McDonald's, uh, you know, uh, fry boxes and, and, uh, 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 drink cups and stuff like that. And that, and that, that was, you know, and I started like picking those up when, as a kid that I was like, I, when I knew that I was like really interested in this and I knew it wouldn't have a value, but it had this memory attached to it or this, you know, this nostalgic value for me. But those Batman glasses from McDonald's, those are a staple. Like every oh, collector yeah. should have, you, no one should tell you what you should collect, but you got to have those Batman glasses. Right. <laughs> They're literally, they made like multi-millions of them. Every oh. McDonald's had them for every happy meal. So yeah. they're, yeah. they're, they're still worth like, two or three bu bucks a piece they're not worth sure. anything but everyone should have them because they are so intricate and cool yeah and, and, and I've, me, I, I have the store display oh really which is there's plastic and they have yeah. oil behind the plastic to make it look like glass that's cool now do, do, is that something you got later or did you like go into the store at the time and be like hey i want that when you're done no i got that last year i, I wasn't like at, in the, at those times i really was just really focused on the comic books and so i, missed, okay. I, I wish i would have been more into sure. um and of course i was i was not i wouldn't say poor yeah i would i wouldn't say like i wasn't um you know, didn't have the uh, disposable income. Too. Didn't have the disposable income. <laughs> and that was the nice thing about about that time that that we grew up in is like it it was. I mean, there was accessibility to that thing. Now I feel like they make so many things. That, that, that it starts day one as a collectible, and it's four hundred dollars. And mm -hmm. it, some of these statues and things like that. That it's like, yeah, when we were kids, it was like, yeah, I just want this toy, and now I can set this toy on my shelf because it looks cool, and it, you know. And but I got it for five bucks and at the dollar store, or, you know, something like that. Yeah, no one. They made so many things that they didn't ever count on lasting forever. And, yeah, yeah. And even even comic books, it was like they had, you know, uh, the reason why the comics from the you know forties, fifties, sixties, and stuff was because they, they made them on the cheapest newsprint possible and put them out there because kids were going to read them and trash them. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it was like in the eighties or, or nineties when, when the comic book boom was and everybody was like, Oh, Oh, we got to keep your comics in mint condition and they're worth all this money. And then uh, it just got so saturated and everybody has their, uh, their comics from that era and in, in uh, cardboard, you know, backers and stuff. And I, which I still do by the way, but you know, I know they're not worth much. You have a, you say that you have this, you know, not as glorious, background of items but uh, and i caught this very early on when i started watching your channel in 2018 but you yeah. got a batman 23 yes which is like one of the rarest batman comics there are yeah it's very hard to find a, a good quality batman 23 yeah which mine is not in good quality uh it, it is it's a it, it's one of those and, and i'll tell you the story behind it i think we we talked about this before uh, in, in chat or one of the live streams was, uh, my uncle found that at a, at a thrift store. Um, and it was, he was looking through this box of old magazines or something. And there was these comics in the bottom and they were just like the covers were falling off and they're ripped up and, and he kind of like just left them in the bottom of the box. And he was like, uh, he goes, how, how much for the box? And the guy's like, I, you know, it's just an old magazine. He's like, I don't know, uh, 10 bucks. 
And so he brought it home and, and there was all these comics. And actually there was a couple other ones in there, which I happened to, to pull out. Uh, there was some of these world's finest uh, comics. Oh, that's a cool cover. And there was this one and this one's in better shape. It's a little tore up on the spine. And then this one, which I, I got to hang up at some point because I just love the cover of it. <laughs> now, that's a classic cover. I don't know what issue number that is, but I, that, yeah. that's one that I, you, that's one of those covers you see a lot on. So this is probably a dangerous question, but do you have a favorite item? Um, yes. It would be the Ideal Utility Belt from 1966. From 66? It's one of the, there, there's a term Holy Grails. Like people, okay. And usually people, when they talk about Holy Grails, it's like their personal Holy Grail. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Grails are really like uh, this this item that lots of collectors want. There's some of them out there that it's an attainable goal, yeah, and that you can get it. But they're either expensive or they're very hard to find. They're very rare, and there's really like in my mind, there's like Thanos's glove of of rocks i don't know marvel that well but yeah. but there's there's six holy grails and one of the holy grails is the ideal utility belt it's one of the ones that like uh um uh, any there was a pawn stars episode about it there's um in the 66 dvd set there's a little featurette about collectibles and they go over the talking about the ideal belt and it's one of the things that uh lots of collectors want to see in Oh, wow. In the box. It's a replica box. I'll be honest with you. The, the box is repo. There's only like two or three in the world that have the original box. Oh, wow. But everything in it is original, even the instructions. So was it, I mean, it looks in really good shape. Was that ever used at all? Oh, yeah. I used to fight crime with it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know if it ever got, the, the, the sticker is a little worn. Um, but nothing's broken on it, so. Yeah, because that's the thing with the yellow utility belt. Usually you can tell, like, you know, a bunch of grubby little fingers get it smudged up. But no, that, the yellow on there just looks really bright. So it looks uh, good shape. Now at this stage of your collection, I mean, there's so much that you, you already have that now it's not as, it, it seems to me like it would be more deliberate. You're looking for, I want this piece. I want to add this piece and, and not as random. You're probably less times where you're out at a store and being like, Oh, that's interesting. I don't have that. I'll pick that up. Or does I, that? I pass up on way more than stuff that I get. In sure. Fact, last sure. couple of years, I've really slowed down on collecting and not really getting yeah. that much new stuff. Um, but there yeah. are five items that every day I search all the Ebays. I like literally, I've got a program set up and I can quickly search eBay Ireland and eBay Netherlands and eBay oh, wow. Singapore just in case it's list, they're listed somewhere else and they're not appearing on the U.S. one. And, and I can tell I'm just looking at like a section of your collection and, and it looks like it keeps going around the corner. So. It, it's three it's three separate rooms. Oh, um, there's the main room. We're in the main room right now. Uh, yeah. And you're actually sitting on one of the shelves that some hot toys normally sit on. And, <laughs> um, and there's like, I'm surrounded by statues and DC collectible figures. And there's I love the Joker. Toys. The Joker's right there uh, beside you. Which the Joker, Joker statues look like. There's a thousand Jokers behind me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it'd be, it'd be your left, I guess. Yeah. Those this ones guy, there look. That's the Batman who laughs, who's a the Jokerized Batman. Oh yeah, yeah. And then below that, there's the the littler ones. The uh... yeah, the Robins. There's like four. oh the Robins. Okay. Or they're called oh. like Crobins or Crobins or yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Brad, it's been it's been a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you for taking some some time and uh, sharing uh, a little bit of your collection with us. And uh, and I think everybody else will enjoy seeing that. And uh, we'll have to connect again and. Uh, and see what uh, what additional items you've added to your collection since uh, since uh, next time we talk. So sure, it's been I mean, a real pleasure to talk with you. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little conversation with with Brad and seeing his incredible collection. And this is something that I just like doing and and being able to have a platform to do that here on the channel is connecting with people that 
that I look up to and, and have, uh, you know, I have a pretty decent collection here around me, but nowhere in comparison to, to Brad's. So it's a real pleasure to be able to talk with, like I said, fellow fran- fans, fellow friends, fellow fans of Batman and be able to learn about what makes us fans of Batman and what brings us together to uh, in this incredible collection. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video talking with the Guinness Book World Record holder for the largest Batman collection. And who knew? He was watching my channel all along and I didn't know it. So if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more content like this, just hit subscribe and be sure to check out some of my past episodes if you're so inclined to. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Andy Canode, and I'll see you soon.